Hello, everybody. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill, and over there we got Christopher Drave. What's going on, people? All right. We so have we great finally, news for all of you. Yeah, we finally got some good news. It's not final, but good news. It will be final. Hopefully. The Dude, way 2020, I, Ben, I don't put no eggs in no basket. <laughs> well, I'm going to put all of my eggs in this basket because all indications are go. Begin. Yes. All right. So the NHL has decided that um, they will start on the uh, uh, 13th of uh, January. With training camp literally beginning this week. Uh, training camp for the teams that did not play in the playoffs will begin December 28th. Um, and yeah, uh, Basically uh, next weekend. Yep. And um, teams that made the playoffs begin January 3rd. So they get almost a week, almost yeah. extra of camp time. Um, the regular season would tentatively end on May 8th around the first end of the first week or in a day or so, give or take. Um, teams are, the, the reason they said tentatively is because they gave themselves a week. In case they have to make up games because of cancellations due to COVID. Correct. So they gave themselves a week to make up games due to COVID. Um, if, they, if teams are unable to make up those games, the schedule um, as of the week after, will follow and will be uneven, but that's pretty much what's going to end up happening, you know, and we're going to see this not just in hockey, it's going to happen in the NBA too, so don't think it's not. It, yeah. Um, uh, there is one thing that still remains um, a, uh, a problem, and that is the Canadian border. Uh, Trudeau has said that he, he, he doesn't care about the revenue. He's openly said that on in, in news um, over the last few months, actually, uh, about hockey. He doesn't care about the hockey revenue, that the Canada is more than just a sport revenue. But uh, when you look at Canada's tax revenue, 90% uh, of it comes from uh, um uh, merchandise, ticket sales, hockey sales, um, jerseys, stuff like that. So a lot of their stuff, um, he, he may be wrong there. Um, yeah, he apparently doesn't realize how important hockey is to the economy. All right. It's not a stereotype. It's a fact, people. Just saying. All right. Um, one, of the other, one of the other things that they have the ability to do, and this is just something that they could do, um, to limit uh, limit travel, there is talks of Calgary moving to either Alberta, uh, Calgary and Vancouver, and Edmonton moving to either Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, or Quebec. Um, they the NHL right now does not have jurisdiction to say that they are going to do it, whether the country likes it or not. They don't have that ability, unlike they have in the U.S where they have the ability to do it, whether or not the government likes it or not. Um, so they don't have that ability. Um, uh, the, the, now, here's the thing that <clears throat> all Canada division that would intrigue some, at, some hockey fans. All right. Now imagine Canada's teams butting heads anywhere between nine to 10 times. A piece, um, give or take a few games. You know, um, you know, it's just one of those things. It'll definitely um, make for some interesting uh, TV. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna definitely be watching more so the uh, Calgary, Edmonton, Montreal, Toronto. Those games. Those guys hate each other as it stands. Imagine being forced to play them all season. Now, the other part of this, the uh, NHL and NHLPA have have real, uh, rectified a situation. The players will be pay, paid 72% of their published salary. So if you make $8 million, chop about 18% off that. Or 28% off that, sorry. Um, but the players, uh, that, that percentage taken off, 
um, will be going to the owners towards the uh, um, Chris, help me out here. I can't remember the name of that. Oh, escrow. The escrow. Yeah, it'll be going into an escrow to help the owners that are having issues. Um, and uh, however, um, they will split 50 50 on revenue between the players. All right, all right. So, all right, and enough then, of like uh, en enough of that part. Here's the aspect that I think our fans are more interested in. Uh, the teams will have a 23 man roster. Um, they're going to have a four to six man taxi squad of players that'll be making an AHL salary. Correct. So, you know, if a guy has to end up on the injured list because of COVID, each team's going to have an AHL taxi squad of, like I said, four to six players. Um, the divisions that are currently being talked about are uh, as follows we have uh, Boston. Buffalo, New Jersey, both New York teams, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Washington. Makes it making Carolina. up your East Coast. Yeah, and then in Division Two, we're going to have Carolina, Columbus, Detroit, Chicago, Florida, Minnesota, uh, Nashville, and Tampa Bay. And then um, you're going to have all your Western teams, like the Ducks, Coyotes, Avalanche, Stars, Kings, Sharks, Blues, and Golden Knights. Although what I've been hearing, Minnesota might be getting bumped over to the West um, division. That, that is what uh, uh, Pierre LeBron, who covered, who was the lead analyst for uh, TSN, he has said that as well. Um, that is part of uh, the. Uh, we will put this up with this video. Um, it is a. Uh, there's a link to the divisions. Um, there. Is. But the only but the only fishy thing is like as far as the agreement goes, yeah, it's gonna be a fifty six game regular season, uh, no exhibition games, but they haven't finalized the divisions, and um, there's gonna be a vote Monday or Monday to officially ratify it. Basically, it's a formality where you have to vote upon it, even though you already agreed to it, you still got to vote on it. But that will be coming down, so the verdict will be final Sunday or Monday. But yeah, the divisions and how the schedule is going to go, that info will probably come out within the next couple of days. So right. there's still more of that coming into place, but we are getting hockey back. That's the whole point of this video, basically. All right, now, now there, day. there is, there is one other thing that we have not talked about, and that is the opt-out situation. Oh, yeah, players are allowed to opt out. Just like with baseball, you can opt out of this season for COVID concerns, which I was expecting that to happen in the first place. However, however, the team that holds your contract has the ability to either A, toll your contract, which means buy. It, you're no longer under contract. If it's the end of your contract and they just want to let you walk, they can let you walk, but you can't sign anywhere else beyond that, like in that season. So say you just don't want to be there. You, that's not a reason you can opt out. The only way you can opt out is, uh, as, as they put it, if he has or an immediate family is considered high risk. So um, if your immediate family or you have something that's high risk, it's not going to be like the, the bubble where you could just opt out because you're scared. Yeah. Um, in this one, you have to actually be high risk. So Tuka Rask, sorry, buddy, you're going to have to play. Or you're going to lose your contract. Correct. Um, so there's that. Uh, you know, I, I just, there's so much like technical stuff that yeah that's why out. i tried getting this video to avoid all the technical aspects fans we're getting hockey back it, it's happening um, um whether we can go to the games or not like i said uh um, that I do information's have a, unavailable currently um i do have some info on that the nhl did say so say florida is allowing fans which they are um if your local government is allowing you to open your building and allow fans, 
um, you are allowed to have fans, but it is based but, on your local government. Yeah, so some teams, yes, some teams, no. Luckily exactly. for us, Nashville will allow fans. Correct. Along with, um, much like uh, unfortunate for uh, us Admirals fans, we know how that's going to go. Yeah, we're not um, going to have any Admiral home games, unfortunately. Um, so given that we're, we're working towards figuring out more, we should have more to you by Tuesday at the latest. Oh, uh, according to Pierre Lebron, I must have read off a bad division because they got the Canadian teams in their division, obviously. But then he has Arizona, Colorado, L.A., Minnesota, San Jose, St. Louis, and Vegas, and London, Columbus, Dallas, Detroit, Chicago, Florida, Nashville, and Tampa Bay in the Central. And then, oh, Carolina would also be in there. And then you got Boston, Buffalo, New Jersey, both New York teams, Pittsburgh, Philly, and Washington. Just right. trying to keep you guys updated with the current division alignments that are being proposed. All right. Um, for this, also from what from what from what it looks like, then what they're gonna end up doing is the Canadian divisions probably gonna be West Coast, the Western Western divisions. Um, and uh, because but there's the only it, two teams in the East. No, I mean if you really look at like the way some of it is set up, like there's a lot more Eastern teams in our division. So they may oh, push yeah. us to the East Coast for a year. Um, we'll be in the same system. It, it'll give new playoff matchups, which I might like. Um, we'll have to see how this works out when it comes playoff time. But it I, does... hope going, I hope going forward, this would be our permanent divisions outside of the Canadian teams. But who knows? Maybe a permanent Canadian division could increase TV ratings. Who knows? Well, maybe in Canada. <laughs> Oh, I know it's going to boost them in Canada, but maybe in America too. Yeah, I mean, um, if you like blood and blood and sweat hockey, you're going to watch that Canada division. Well, face it, most Americans watch hockey based solely on the fact that they want to see guys fight. So if you have enough teams that have a blood rivalry, you're going to get a more physical style of hockey. And most right, American speaking, fans, they like that. Speaking of blood rivalries, Okay. Chicago and everybody. Chicago Detroit rivalry will get renewed. Yeah. Yeah. Um Nashville Detroit, Nashville Chicago. Nashville Dallas is a good rivalry but it's it was a slow build. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to miss the rivalry between Nashville and Winnipeg. Yeah, I can't wait for that to come back. I I see it as it works. But hey, if it disappears for good, so be it. I mean, they're probably still going to go back to the original system because um, I've read a few things. Because they got Seattle they have to take into account next year. So, yeah. yeah. Um, there's some things you got to, like, work your way around it. But uh, we're, we're just happy to be able to look forward to something. <laughs> yeah, we actually have hockey. It's actually going to happen. Speaking like I said, hockey, as soon as actually... as soon as we get it scheduled, we'll talk about that. As soon as we get like confirmation, we have videos that we're gonna be popping out this week. I got a feeling we're gonna end up having like three videos to do this week. All right. Speaking of having hockey to watch, go out, check out our ECHL coverage of the Florida Everglades. Yeah, uh, give us a check out over there. Also subscribe to us on YouTube. Please watch our videos. We uh, try also, putting in our effort over there. Also, try uh, try checking out our sponsor, Hockey Locker. Um, Hockey Locker, you could go to their uh, website. Where? HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. But, yeah, we do got hockey. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing a preview of the World Juniors Tournament because the Predators have some prospects in there, including yep. our number one draft pick. Yep, and their first game is on Christmas, so that's just a heads up. That's that's one of the things we know. Yeah, for... so we, we got more videos coming up. You know, we got content. Tonight, it was a huge, uh, a huge step in the right direction. We will have hockey, and hopefully me and Dan can go down to Tennessee for a Preds game. Yeah, we could only play. That's the ultimate goal, to go down to Tennessee for at least one game. Hell, I'd be happy if we can go to Minnesota and watch the Preds play the Wild. 
I'd be happy to just go to Indianapolis and watch the Everblades play. I just want to see guys on ice with, you know, playing the game they Oh, uh, you just want to see the Everblades play the Indy Fuel. Well, I don't care. That would be well, fun. That, yeah, because that's the, fur- the closest I'd ever have, the furthest I'd have to travel. Yeah, well, Indy ain't even that far. No. Honestly, dude, I'm so desperate for hockey, I'd pay for a damn uh, Blackhawk ticket. If they <laughs> play the Predators, I'd pay for a ticket to go to All Chicago. Right, no. Um, regarding the Blackhawks, uh, the Blackhawks, uh, the, the Illinois governor has announced that they will not be having fans, period, this season. Oh, never mind it. So no so, trips to Rockford. That's going to suck. Yeah, so when that comes to us going to Rockford like we normally do, that means we're going to have to go. If we go down there, we're most likely just going to see people that we know. Oh, down food. And most, food. More accurately gone down there to our favorite burger place. Yep, but check us out tomorrow. Hey, who knows? Yeah, two videos to do tomorrow. For you tomorrow. So. Huh? I said, who knows? Maybe we have news for you tomorrow. Nobody knows. Well, we got two videos for sure tomorrow. We're re- we're uh, recapping the Everblades versus the Swamp Rabbits in Game Two. Plus, we got our preview to World Juniors. No, you got it wrong. It's the Swamp Rabbits. Whatever. <laughs> either way. Either way. But yeah, uh, we're getting hockey back January 13th, folks. So if you got NHL TV, uh, be prepared to pay. <laughs> All righty. So for Dan and Chris, don't forget to subscribe like our Facebook to us page on YouTube. and subscribe to us on YouTube. Click that bell. That way you get notified every time we upload a video. I'm Dan Goodmo. Like I said, that's Christopher Draves. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.